Hello students, I would like to show you to, uh, now uh, how to find resultant force using rectangular component method. Uh, this concept is also already shown in is already in your slides, but I'm going to show in the video to make it clearer for you. Okay, as we all know, force actually can be divided into two components, which is it can be resolved into two components, which is in the x direction and also y direction. Okay, look here. This is just the, the basic uh, concept where we have one force F1. F1 can be resolved into X, F, X components and also Y component. So this is how it looks like. But this part is going to be positive X and positive Y. If we are in this quadrant, so this F3 force with this angle of lambda can be divided into X and Y. It looks like this. So this is going to be negative x, the value of x here, force of x here will be negative and the value of um, uh, component y here would be positive. Uh, if you look into this quadrant, F2 with the angle of beta can be divided into two, which is F2x here, x direction and also y direction, which x will be positive and y will be negative. Uh, for this uh, force here, F4, with the angle, angle of alpha, can be divided into x and y direction like this, uh, where x is going to be positive, uh, negative and y is negative as well. So, let's look into this question. This is just a basic question. So, this rectangular component method is useful when you have more than two forces acting on a point. Okay, you can use triangular method, triangular rule if you have two components, uh, two forces acting on it. But if you have more than two, it's advisable for you to use rectangular component method instead of triangular a uh, triangle rule. You can use triangle rule as well, but you have to do some uh, simplification to obtain the final answer. But a, a more straightforward uh, uh, method will be rectangular component method. Okay, so if you have more than two force acting on a point and you need to find the resultant of the force, I would advise you to use resultant uh, to use rectangular component method. So look at this question. So we have one hook and there are two forces F1 for 200 Newton with the angle of 30 degree and we have uh, another force acting on it with the magnitude of 500 Newton uh, at 70 degree. Okay, we look, this is not 40, yeah? The, sum, the, the, the direction of this force is actually 70. Okay, let's, we, let's transform it into our diagram here. So we look. So this is a transformation from this uh, figure into this uh, diagram, our diagram. Right. We look here, the force 200 Newton with angle of 30 degree. Since we are using rectangular component method to find the resultant, resultant of these two forces, we have 200. So this 200 with the angle of 30 can divide that into x component and also y component. Okay, for x component is 200 cos theta because it is theta, right? I think you have learned it before, so it should be cos theta here. For the x, uh, sorry, for the y and this is plus. For y, is having a negative magnitude, like, uh, okay, and this y, in what is y component of 200 newton is minus 200 sine 30. If we add this two using this formula, we'll get back 200. Okay. Right. For 500 newton with the angle of 70, so when we split it, when we resolve it, we can have 500 cos 7 cos cos 70 for the x direction. And for the force of this 500 in y direction, negative 500 sine 70. Okay, let's do the rectangular component method to find summation of, uh, to find the resultant force of these two forces acting on this point. So, we write like this, plus default going to the right, summation of fx is this formula. We have to take all components all x components of the forces acting on this point so we have 200 
and also we have this 500 cos theta so I put it there so positive positive then you end up having a positive uh, uh, summation uh, of positive uh, x and look here I put it here this um, uh, sign which is the force is going that way right so it's correct we assume the force is going that way right because it's positive Okay, so this is important because for you to know where actually uh, your uh, the direction, sorry, to for you to locate the direction later, uh, direction or the angle of this uh, summit, this uh, resultant force. So I put it here. Positive. I'll uh, say look here to find the summation of F Y. We take a default of anything force goes up upward is positive so whatever goes downward is considered negative so we know the force of these two forces the, the y force y direction of these forces are actually all are acting downward so negative 200 sine 30 plus negative 500 sine 70 because it's a plus the formula is always plus it's just that the force is going down so we add a negative here so we have negative five nine uh, negative five nine point eight five. So the force is actually okay positive up, so it's negative. So it says that the force here is going down, right? So we know it's going down. Okay. Now we can find the summation of the uh, we can find the resultant. So we use the rectangular component method method. Uh, rectangular component method to find the resultant. So we know summation of sx squared plus summation of fy squared uh, square root. Then you'll get your force, resultant force. And how to find the direction of this resultant force? So we have to use this equation tangent theta equivalent to summation of fy divided by summation of fx. And then we get theta minus 58.87. So what does that mean? What does it mean? And how does what is actually the direction of this force? So negative means it is not uh, uh, that means it's not in the uh, positive x direction, positive direction. So for if you want to, because if you do not know how to show it, uh, how. Uh, you do not know how to show, I mean, uh, the, the direction of this force, but from here you can actually roughly figure out your force from looking at these uh, two forces acting like this, so that you can uh, assume your force is something like this, going down like this, right? By looking into these two, your force something looking like this, right? You can assume it looking something like this. Okay, so see, it. look here. That's what this is important. You know? Your x force is going this way, your y force is going this way, therefore your force must be somewhere here. Okay, this is your fr, which is uh, complement whatever you have uh, uh, assumed just now. So, negative, right? this is your force, uh, this is your, uh, your direction of that force. Okay. So for your final answer, you have to write like this. Your your resultant force magnitude is six is five point seven five newton, with the angle of fifty eight point nine degree. So this is how you should actually write on uh, when uh, write on your paper when you do your uh, when you try to solve uh, when you try to solve your uh, question using rectangular component method. Okay, I hope you understand this. Uh, so I'll see you in the next lecture. Thank you.